Hi, my name is Andrew Toft and today I'm up on the Upper Craigsbeat on the River Orkey. I'm going to be talking about spay casting techniques. Mainly in this session I'm going to be talking about the single spay cast. I've taught spay casting for over two decades and if you had to say to me, what is the singular most important thing that someone can do to improve their technique? I would say without hesitation to properly engage your bottom hand and learn to use both hands to maximise the flexible nature of the rod. A lot of people use this top hand as their primary source of power or their primary default technique and they use this to pos for position and angle change but more often for the forward delivery which is basically this top hand just pushing forward over the top of the bottom hand. Before we do any spay casting, it's essential to talk about some of the fundamental points in using a double-handed rod. I'm going to make reference to certain things, one of them being the key casting position, which is going to be around about here. You'll notice my hand is just in line with my forehead. The other hand is quite central to my body, but importantly, it's adequately out for me to utilise that hand. If you see someone doing this, or their hand is up in this corner, it means it's a sure sign that they're not using that bottom hand at all, and it's mainly top-handed technique. So from this key position, the casting movement is going to be a slight forwards and downwards movement. Using this bottom hand, what I don't want to do is accelerate forward. If I do that, straight away it's non-recoverable. I cannot make that angular change properly. So, from the key casting position, forward and downward. And round about this point here, I'm going to energise the rod tip using both wrists and bringing it to a firm stop. The reason for that is so that I can turn the rod tip over at the fastest speed. Now, it's quite difficult to do this, but you watched here, I'm not using too much power and as I approach this part here, I'm going to apply that flick. The easiest way to feel that is in slow motion. So I'm going to go forward, 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 flick. And you can actually see the rod rebounding in here. I can actually feel a kick from the rod. Notice how I'm stopping that and really blocking it with my bottom hand. I'm stopping that from continuing into my body. If I allow that just to continue, the rod's going to over rotate and energy's escaping out the bottom. Remember, every single cast we do is dependent upon rod tip speed. And the best rod tip speed I can, I can get is when I bring that rod to a firm, abrupt stop. Or I energise the tip to make it turn over at speed. Now, this sometimes is referred to as lead before speed. The lead being another word just for smooth acceleration and the speed being the actual abrupt stop or flick. So, lead, speed, and that is what you want. You want that high pitched sound. Probably for the last 10 or 15 years, I've started many sessions without any line in the rod. And we'll explain and make sure that so someone can understand and utilize this bottom hand and feel the flexible nature in the rod. Even when I turn that around, I can feel the resistance in here and against my upper hand. Then what we'll do is get this, this flick so as that someone has a reference point for what that feels like. Because no matter what casting movement I do, I'm going to use that to some degree, a varying degree. In this clip, I'm going to talk about the single spay cast. It can be in varying angles, mainly 30, 45 or 90, and then anywhere in between. Now, one of the most important things is very easy to lose concentration when you're walking down the river and end up with your backside facing upstream as opposed to redirecting and repositioning prior to making your cast. One thing we've got to be sure of that when we lift up here, the next movement that we're going to make in a single spay cast is to tease that line outward before accelerating up and back in to form the D-loop. Now that isn't very easy to do. It's a combination of body, hand and arm movements. 
However, there is things we can do to help us. One being to position the hand either in the middle or just slightly inside. And the reason for that is when I come upwards, I'm going to tease that rod out the way, which has to happen. And as soon as I move my hand, you can see that that's making that correct movement. If, however, I have my hand at the opposing hip, what's going to happen is it's going to be closer to a straight line or a very narrow angle change. And it's going to send my anchor in D loop up here. What I want to do is steer it round and in here. So starting off, that's the position there. I'm then going to hold the rod right at the very bottom so as I can get maximum leverage. Lift up. Now I'm on my back foot at the moment. I'm then going to tease forward, watching the rod tip, steer round. And as I see the rod round about this point here, that's giving me an indication to make my acceleration. Out, round, there, touch. And from here, this is important. The best advice I could give you is when you see that anchor touching down, you're going to smoothly glide forward and apply that speed or high stop. Then as the loop unrolls, you can sympathetically come down just to absorb any excess energy in that. Now, if we're changing direction and we're now going to do a 90 degree change of direction, this is going to become very tricky. My hand is going to now come right inside here. And the reason being is because I'm maximising that range of movement out the way. That's what has to happen. It is not the same cast, therefore it cannot be the same movement. Notice that I've brought the rod slightly in and also up the way i.e. I brought it higher and the reason for this is because I'm wanting to make a much more acute turn accelerate up and in and make sure my forward delivery I'm, having, I'm still maintaining that high stop so just once more right over up steer out turn pivot and there's my high stop it's essential that doesn't matter who's at the end of the rod, that that line must go outward before it can come back in. Now I've got about 60 feet of line out at the moment. So we'll start off with a 45 degree change of direction. That's going to be somewhere over here. I'm quite deep, so I'm going to come up a slight bit higher and make that alteration. So remember, hand in, up, tease out. There's my bottom hand and there's the cast. Now it's very helpful to watch the rod tip here. I'm watching that rod tip round. There's my indication to accelerate and there was my forward delivery. Now, I'm going to make a cast just holding the rod with my fingertips. And the reason for that is just to let you see how effective this is when I'm using both hands correctly. There we go, two hands, my hands are fully open and there's the loop forward. Watch for the, the efficient stop. Now, let's replace the line and I'm now going to do a spay cast with 60 feet of line holding the rod with only my fingertips. Tease it out, accelerate and there we go. There's 60 feet of line and I'm still only holding the rod there with my fingertips. It's not a product of power, it's a product of technique. We'll try the 90 degree change of direction. Up, out, and there we go. Maybe not quite 90, but it was 80 anyway. <laughs> 